All right, this is the Elite Review Podcast coming at you today with the Rise of Skywalker review, final edition of the Star Wars Saga ranking in our Star Wars reviews. But on special guest here, we got Randy. And uh, Hello. this is a movie he definitely appreciates. So we thought we'd bring him on here and we want to just talk about this and review this movie. So uh, let's go ahead and dive right in real quick. Um, so Randy, you just want to go ahead and tell us uh, what you think about this movie or kind of what you think about Star Wars in general or what it means to you. Um, I personally love Star Wars a lot. I've always loved Star Wars. Um, uh, my father and my family has always loved Star Wars. I, this movie to me is my favorite. I want to get hate for this, but is my favorite, uh, Star Wars movie of any of them. And, uh, and I just love it for all the scoring. Oh, well, let's go ahead and dive right in. We'll each take turns here. So we're just going to go ahead and rank this the way we rank all of our movies and just rank different aspects of it, scale 1 to 10. So we'll go ahead and start with the characters here on a scale 1 to 10. We'll start with you, Randy. What would you give the characters and why? Um, I I personally, I gave them pretty, I gave a lot of these pretty high score. I was uh, watching the movie recently. (laughs) Yeah. And the I was really trying to pay attention uh, in general the characters and even individually. Mm-hmm. I gave a nine out of ten. <laughs> it's it's pretty exactly. high up there, and the reasoning for it is that each character has in the movie a sort of one a beautiful moment and two a humorous moment. You know they all have um, they're all they're all really well designed, all really well uh, put together and. Uh, and obviously there's some downsides to uh, each of the characters Um, and for what they did do and I know some people are upset with uh, them not having as much rose or this or that Um, but for what they did do I think each of the characters really were played well and were awesome in the film and I love them nice alright what about you Aiden um man characters I'm gonna go with seven and I almost want to say six, but uh, just the inclusion of the Emperor in general, just his character, his reasoning for being there is a very strong, and I think they should have, definitely should have built that up a lot more. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, like, Finn, I don't like his, his character arc in this. Like, yeah. he had a fully, like, good character arc in The Force Awakens, and then in these last two movies, they just don't give him much. Um, Poe's okay. I like seeing Lando again. What really boosted up to a seven for me is the inclusion of uh, Luke and and Han Solo, especially Han Solo. Yeah, them being in this movie is just so epic, mm-hmm. and I love it. Uh, Kylo's character is good as always. I always like him in every movie. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. That's how I feel. Cool. Well, I gave it a 6 out of 10. Um, I can mostly agree with what you said there. I think I like one aspect of the characters a lot, and then I don't like the other aspect. So mm-hmm. when it comes to kind of what Ray and Kylo go through as far as that, and Han and Luke showing up, and some cool character moments there I really like. But then when we look at the aspect of the Emperor showing back up, as well as, yeah, with like Finn and Poe and what they do in the movie... It just it's not the best of their characters for me. I think most of them are doing better in Force Awakens and Last Jedi than in this movie. Um, especially Finn, like yeah, he was kind of annoying in Last Jedi, but in this one he just doesn't do like anything very much and they're always teasing that he can be force sensitive but don't really pay it off at all. Um, and then yeah, just Palpatine and kind of Snoke just getting killed off in the last movie, I think it was a mistake. And um, then they had to kind of just force themselves into a corner and bring Palpatine back. Didn't explain it very well, so I can't give the characters much there. But let's go Wait, ahead. Sorry, what did you give it? A six out of ten. Characters. Okay. All right, let's go to the dialogue now. What did you give it, Randy? I gave it. I did go a little lower on this one. I have a few reasonings for it. This one was seven out of ten. Um, like like I said uh, for characters. One, the dialogue I thought was pretty, uh, pretty good uh, in most uh, terms. One, they like C three PO, uh, Poe. Uh, I love the dialogue between 
uh like i know poe and ray fought a lot this movie but it almost felt like they were siblings to me uh kind of like now they've known each other for a while and so they're constantly bickering and arguing about it and their back and forth banter is pretty fun um uh i liked the uh dialogue between uh um forgetting his name off the top of my head um the, uh, the, the the Finn and the other stranded stormtroopers uh, just like uh, talking about it. Um, I loved, you know, the tense moments where like, you know, that moment on Endor where Finn and uh, Finn and Poe were kind of at odds at each other, kind of like fed up and, you know, upset. Um, I liked the dialogue between Kylo and Rey, especially where, you know, it, it was a little weird how much Kylo was trying to get her to join the dark side. Um, and so that I was kind of like, eh, it's not as good. Um, and I think that some, especially like right before they like left uh, to go to the uh, desert planet, I can't name off the top of my head. Um, the one where they meet Lando. Uh, yeah. it, it felt weird. Like it felt weirdly spliced. Uh, and it felt like there was a lot of unnecessariness there. Um, dialogue between people and they should have just kept with one or two things and they could have expanded on other things if they had cut out some of those parts that just felt unnecessary um, but I think for the most part the dialogue was fun and interactive it kept you going and um, and later on towards the end you know it you know the the power of like even though uh, the power of Palpatine and such. It, the dialogue felt like it really uh, kept the story up, but there was a few things that they could have cut out. They could have, you know, not extended as much, and you know, just think some things they could have done better. Mm -hmm. cool. What about you, Aiden? Yeah, um, I gave it a six just because um, it doesn't have as much kind of cringy jokes as the last ones. Like, I feel like they definitely backed down on that a bit, especially towards the end. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. Again, with the whole Emperor thing, they have very little dialogue explaining why he's back and yeah. what he's doing there. They definitely should have. I think they should have added, like, an hour to this movie. Like, make it a three-hour movie, giving it time to also, <laughs> like, explain why Emperor's there. But the dialogue and that was done very poorly, and I, I don't like that at all. Um, one thing that I do like is, uh, like, when they're all together, like, this is finally the movie where they're together, like, most of the time. Yeah. It's fun just to see them all as a group, going out on adventures and stuff, even though mm -hmm. I don't like the, some of the character arcs as well much. It is definitely fun to see them together. But, yeah, it's not, like, any amazing dialogue to me. Yeah. I do really like when Han, Han and uh, Kylo Ren talk to each other. I think that's Me too. all great stuff. But, yeah. Alright. Well, for me, I gave the dialogue a 7. Uh, mostly for some reasons where, yeah, it's a lot. It's pretty good. Um, it's got some fun stuff in it, but yeah, not amazing things. Nothing that hits the heart too much, except for maybe Han and Kylo's talk. I feel like most Star Wars movies can hit the heart somehow. Um, this one doesn't too much for me, but it's mostly good. I'm definitely sick of the line that they've overplayed in all the trailers of, you know, being like, they fly now? They fly now. Like, I'm so sick of that line. Uh, um, that made <laughs> me agree. knock it down a little. I'm, I, like, those lines like that, I'm just kind of like, eh. Uh, they've been able to fly for a long time. <laughs> yeah. I like, should know this. He was in the Empire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so things like that. And then, like, I am all the Jedi. Like, I don't know. Come on. I don't know. It was okay. So yeah, the dialogue's not my favorite, but that's what I give it. Um, let's move on to the visuals. What would you give the visuals, Randy? Scale one to ten. I gave it a ten out of ten. I loved the visuals, and I mean, how could you not? This was the most recent installment. They're gonna have the best budget for it, and they're gonna have a lot of, uh, you know, room to use that sort of thing. One. I'm a big uh, Millennium Falcon fan, and I think a lot of the visual stuff they did with it uh, mm -hmm. were beautiful, and I loved it. I did love, I loved the visuals, especially towards the end of. I loved, I loved the original, uh, not original, the beginning visuals of all the Star Destroyers coming out of the ground. I thought it was beautifully well done, beautifully rendered, and 
uh, and towards the end, the lightning crack cracking through the sky, showing the silhouettes of the uh, this new uh, sort of empire, uh, and then all these ships coming together and such. The visuals there, I thought the visuals of the desert planet were very beautiful. Um, that they were on the and like the snow planet uh that they were on uh with like the some uh falling flakes that you know maybe didn't even be need to be there but were included um i loved the cleanness of a lot of the ships that they used uh or the dirtiness depending on the ship uh that was currently introduced and i love the different especially when they were uh jumping uh light jumping uh they showed a ton of different beautiful and scary planets um uh, all of a sudden and it, it, to me the visuals were really well done i loved the look of everything um and uh there's nothing i could see them even changing a lot uh to make it better um so overall i, I give it a 10 out of 10. nice cool what about you Aiden? yeah um I give it an 8, but I could easily boost up to a 9. I think every planet that it shows is really well done, especially when uh, they're fighting in the rain, uh, Kylo and Rey. Mm -hmm. I think that whole scene looks amazing. And, uh, and of course, the lightning at the end. Like, Even though I'm not a huge fan of that storyline, it does look awesome, and I was very impressed by that. Um, yeah, I gave it an 8, but I could boost up to a 9. I don't think it's a 10, though. I don't think it's perfect. But, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, oh, one more thing. I guess this kind of goes hand-in-hand hand with the action, but what they did with uh, Kylo Ren and Rey kind of fighting um, and then kind of, like, traveling to whatever place... You know what I mean. Yeah. And they're fighting, and the lightsabers are going to each place that they're at. Yeah. Um, I think the it was a little bit weird definitely but i think it did look really nice yeah nice i could have explained that better but <laughs> <laughs> cool um well i get the visuals at eight too but i also agree like if it's a nine or something that's cool um yeah it's not my favorite visuals either um i just i still think i like the visuals probably more in like last jedi and stuff than i do in this but um i think so too yeah, but uh, they're pretty good. I, I do like all the ships that they show at the end, kind of showing different like X-Wings and um, the Mandalorian ship that he uses. And um, I do think- I did not know cool that was there, there. not gonna lie. <laughs> yeah, it's a little hard to miss. Uh, I'm sorry, it's easy to miss, but um, yeah, it's pretty cool. I like the jungle she's in at the beginning. I like um, when Luke has his little part where he lifts the X-Wing back up. I guess that's kind of a scene with a lot of incorporations into it, but I like how that looks just because it's like reminiscing of Power Strikes Back. Um, yeah, I love the whole oh, fight yeah. on between Kylo Ren and Rey in the rain. It's so cool. Um, then I like their fight too on Exegol. I think Exegol is a really cool planet. I'm glad they brought that into the universe. It's pretty cool. Um, it's a cool place for the Emperor to be and stuff. And I like just how kind of eerie and creepy that planet kind of is. Um, so yeah, the visuals are pretty good. Yeah, not bad at all. Um, yeah. What would you guys give the I action? I don't... Like, what were you saying? I was just going to say, it doesn't have anything like a throne room. Because the throne yeah. room just looked really nice. Yeah. I think I like that kind of stuff more, but it was still really, really good. Yeah, me too. All right, let's move on to the action. What would you give it, Randy? the action uh i think i went with 10 out of 10 on this one um uh, yeah just because i loved all the action sequences that I showed um whether it be small ones like um whatever his uh, name is i can't remember um the uh hux i think it was uh general hux uh killing the stormtroopers yeah. just a little bit yeah. you see the flash in the background um the action of uh Kylo and Rey fighting, which was all throughout the movie, um, was beautifully well done. Uh, and I love the, you know, uh, even though the beginning of it uh, was really quick, um, I kind of felt that way to the characters as well. bound to on like little buggy things while the, the other two were on speeders and it was like you're going as fast as like pretty close to speeders level like that's pretty fast <laughs> um 
but uh, just yeah. you know, little things here and there that were a little like, eh. But I definitely think that a lot of the action sequences, uh, I loved the Snow Planet action sequence with Kylo and Rey because the transitioning scenes between where they were, I thought were really well done. And the chore choreography of the fights were really well done. Uh, I would say that sometimes like when Rey would like fly through the air and stuff, I thought it was a little, eh. Uh, Granted, it's the force. It's not like I want to understand it, but it was a little like eh, visually. Um, and then I love scenes like where they had the uh, quote unquote force fight um, where they uh, where Ray uh, used lightning. I thought it was really well done. Um, and oh, just yeah. the just the whole. Yeah, like obviously things here and there, but for the most part, I absolutely loved it. And I enjoy all the action that it has in it. Cool. All right, what about you, Aiden? Yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun action. I'm not going to be super, super nice. I'm going to give it a seven. Just because comparing this to the rest of the universe, we have seen cooler action. Like in The Last Jedi, even. I liked, all, I liked a lot of the action that more than what we get in this. This stuff is still cool. There's not like a huge lightsaber battle at the end or anything, but... Um, yeah, I thought all the transition stuff was was pretty cool, uh, and of course I love the fight between Kylo and Rey, uh, it's like out in the rainy planet or whatever it is. Um, yeah, it, it was good action, but I mean, comparing it to the rest of all of Star Wars, I think that there's definitely been better in the past. Um, yeah, that's all I gotta say. Cool. All right, I gave it an 8 out of 10 because it's mostly good. Once again, yeah, not my favorite stuff. There's better in the universe for sure. Um, but yeah, I mean, on its own, it's pretty good. Um, there's not a whole ton. I mean, there's like the end. The end battle, you know, is of course pretty cool with all the ships and stuff showing up. Um, I think their fight against Palpatine's kind of annoying for most of it until closer to the end because he kind of just wrecks them most of the time. And then okay. finally, you know, Ray gets the strength to, you know, hold the lightsabers and fight him, which is really cool when that happens. Um, but yeah, of course, like the Ray and Kylo scene, that's pretty cool. That's really good choreography there too. Um, I don't know where I didn't know where to put this, whether it was the action or the visuals, really. But that part where Ray sh shows up with like that alternate version of her and her fangs come out and stuff, I really don't like that. I, I didn't know if that was more in the action or the I visuals, but it. <laughs> yeah, it's it's pretty funny, but it's like ridiculous. I don't know is, why they made her have fangs for that. It was a weird choice for me. Uh, so that oh, part so I don't cool. like. But uh, besides that, yeah, it's pretty good action. Yeah, it's not my favorite, but it's enough to be good. Um, let's get to our final section here. This will probably be our longest one, but let's talk about the plot, the whole storyline of this movie. And we'll start okay. with you, Randy. And this is where I talk a lot. <laughs> So, there are two ways to view this. There are, there are multiple ways to view this, but there's two main ones, in my opinion, to view this. One, if you're looking at the plot collectively with all three movies, it's it's hard to... Uh, so, let's, let's take the original trilogy, for example. <laughs> Their movies all together were beautifully well done. They were beautifully well transitioned, and I thought that they flowed really well. I think for the sequels... That's less the case. One being getting new directors and two getting yeah. new writers and like this and that. Mm -hmm. And it really mess it really messed with the story. Um, but on their own, each movie, I love them a lot. And so for the just the plot of this movie, uh, I do agree that though that killing Snoke off uh, did feel a little underwhelming in the previous movies. But uh, the entrance of Palpatine, although not explained as much, uh, there was a little uh, line of dialogue that said uh, cloning uh, things that only the Sith knew how to do. Um, they could have expanded on that, uh, and they could have been like, you know, what was it an ancient thing or like blah blah this and like they could have explained it better. Um, yeah. and the, the plot, uh, it was very quickened at the very beginning, which at least to me, as, when I first watched it, it jostled me a lot. I was like, what am I watching? Um, and so I was like really kind of confused at first of the plot. Um, 
I think that the uh, plot between kind of uh, the, the the it's it, I'm conflicted here because Ray and Kylo had a very good and bad kind of weird thing between each other. Now it is true the rule uh, or not the rule, but the uh, kind of the rule. I don't know. It's it's weird because it's the it's the duo. It's the the Sith always have like kind of the duality, that's it, the duality uh, kind of apprentice and master. And so, and then them having a connection through Vader and Palpatine, uh, you know, was kind of, you know, to me, it actually, it made sense that they had that sort of strong connection with each other. Um, that strong of how it kind of showed was a little hard to believe. Um, but uh, the um the but the the her being able to use lightning uh makes complete sense to me uh one she's a palpatine child she what's interesting is that she's very strong with the force being a child of palpatine but she just she does not carry one of the traits he does which is foresight you know uh or uh foresight and palpatine like to me him cloning makes sense uh it's uh you know, he constantly, he was able to see through the force, the threads of the future. Uh, maybe not always what was going to happen, but oftentimes he maybe, maybe even saw his own demise at some point. So he cloned himself just in case. Um, now, granted, at the end of the sixth movie, he wasn't expecting Vader to portray him. Now, that was something that was unexpected, but that's when the cloning came into uh, practice. Um, where it was like, my demise will come. I will tr clone myself into other things. Uh, whether it be old age even um and so you know that although a lot of people had an issue with did make sense uh to an extent um at least in my opinion uh him being there and having a whole new uh empire to rise up it was weird how quiet he was for so long uh i, I guess he kind of wasn't because he was controlling snoke or made snoke or whatever that kind of weird that was weird um but I think definitely the way they went down with it, where Ray was his child, although I don't understand it, I did enjoy it. I uh, I enjoyed a lot of the plot of uh, kind of, uh, I think, although Finn kind of got the short end of the stick, I think the, the, uh, what he was kind of going through himself was really well done. Um, kind of becoming a new leader of the resistance poe kind of being the hot-headed pilot that he uh, is and was um i think they the plot of him um uh, and although i know people had an issue with him before being uh, me uh mexican people and such um me uh, for me that's that, that's hard to say that's not my field to say i would say though that 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 is what he used to be uh and that he did get away from that um so it's for me it's a little like eh, at least he got away from it you know it's not like he still is this he's a leader of the resistance um and so uh, i know his plot line is kind of a lot of people don't like I think the overall plot of the movie of, you know, oh, Palpatine is kind of back, we need to take him down, was uh, pretty well done. Uh, and the scene at the end with everyone coming together, and she did, uh, once her face did explain to Poe that there are people out there who are willing to fight, just that they're scared, you know, but that's how they get you is making you think that you're alone. Um, and so I think especially in things here and there it made the plot better um and that the plot of it overall i know uh the I, I like to think that the rise of skywalker isn't in reference to ray or anything like that but is a uh direct line to kylo i think kylo was kind of the main character in all this he was the opposite of vader he went from being evil and being born into this evil to turning to good um whether that be because of his both of his father and mother the words from her uh uh them um kind of coming through and changing him and knowing that vader himself turned good in the end um was very reminiscent of that i loved it and both vader and kylo die in the end and that's beautiful to me you know is that he did look up to vader and value him and so he died in a similar way he did you know he went out with uh a kiss and a force heal <laughs> um, 
force healing i think uh sh like has been in the star wars universe but should have been a uh, better introduced to this it kind of just kind of started doing it um and it's definitely uh, it, to me that's uh kind of off um i definitely think ray being able to beat palpatine is one of the few people able to defeat palpatine in the sense of she's one of his own and is very powerful herself um and I know uh, at the very end, when she takes on the Skywalker name, a lot of people had issue with that, but I actually think it's beautiful and makes sense. She was the, if you know the trope, the found family um, was kind of that. Leia was a great sort of mother to her, someone who took her in and said, it's okay to be afraid and to be scared, but also to be strong when you need to be. Um, and the fact that uh, even Han was kind of a rough and gruff, uh, I'd actually say that he was kind of an uncle to her, while uh, kind of Luke was really the father to her. Uh, you know, taught her a lot of things. While being both skeptical and afraid, he still taught her even though he himself was afraid. Um, so she was saying, and even paying homage to Kylo, who was himself a Skywalker, saying, thank you for giving me life. You know, for Luke, thank you for teaching me. Kylo, thank you for giving me life. And uh, and Leia, thank you for being there for me. And kind of all of those saying, I will continue on your legacy and spread your name uh, and the good you have done for the galaxy. Um, and so I didn't find problem with that, even though a lot of people did. Um, and so overall, uh, there was a few things that um, they could have done better. Um, I gave the overall uh, score of the plot probably a 7 out of 10. They could have done some things better. Some things they went with weren't very good and or weren't well done and weren't explained well and they really should have been um but the way they went and a lot of the things they did with the way they went i really enjoyed and even though there's a lot of things that people have problem with i actually loved and seen in a positive light now the ray thing of her being like the fangs and the evil and stuff like that that was a little silly, but I think it was definitely a good thing to show her that this is what it can turn you into. And being in such an evil place with such an evil presence is going to start warping your mind um, to see things. And I do think that they kind of went a little overboard with that, but I think it was a valuable lesson to teach her in choosing that if you grab Kylo's hand the next time he shows it, it's not going to end well, um, at least for the people you care about. So overall, 7 out of 10, a lot of things they could have done better but overall i really enjoyed it and i would watch again <laughs> nice well uh we'll go ahead and dive into you aiden i'm just gonna remind you we got about eight minutes left here so uh you just spend about maybe two to three minutes if possible <laughs> um man okay so i definitely think that this movie uh, this is a problem with like the movie but with the whole trilogy it definitely should have just been maybe show Emperor kind of building up to be the bad guy if they really wanted to go that route. But I really think that the inclusion of Emperor, just, it just doesn't work very well for me. Especially because the last time you see him, he's getting exploded. Um, and then after you see that, they don't they don't really give you any, they don't give you much explanation in the movie, at least. Um, so that whole thing is just super rushed and I, I just generally don't like it. Ray being Palpatine's granddaughter or whatever, I think is kind of meh because I liked I liked Ray being a nobody. Um, it makes it feel like not everyone in Star Wars has to be related in order to use the Force. So yeah, that was kind of eh, iffy to me. Um, the Ray like looking at herself as like an evil self was hilarious to me. It was really, I thought it was dumb, but like the hiss, I was laughing so hard in theaters. <laughs> um, yeah, overall, a really rushed, kind of sloppy plot. Um, I'm going to give it a four, but I think it's an okay plot if they just gave it more time or at least made this a three hour movie, but they just didn't explain things well and it's it's a fun one but yeah it, it's not a very good plot 
Cool, cool. What about you? So I give it a four as well. Um, I always like the term of it just being kind of a fun, messy movie is the best way to enjoy uh, to describe it. It's like a movie I enjoy, but I know it's like so messy when I look at the plot. Um, I gotta agree with a lot of those things. Like I just think I can't not look at the real life scenario of how Disney handled the movie because it's such a shame that like you got JJ for the first one, yeah. bring in Ryan Johnson, bring back JJ for the last one. I don't think the visions coincided very well or Disney didn't at least plan it very well to lead up to something epic. And it's kind of disappointing that it's the finale to the whole saga of like this like saga spanning decades and this is what we get. Um, one thing that hasn't been mentioned that I think would have been really cool is like the end with all the force ghosts kind of speaking to Ray. like that's cool. But I don't know why they wouldn't take the time uh -huh. to like, bring those actors there and have them like cameo for actual physical force ghost showing up like they all came back to do the Not voice so. but i don't know why they didn't come back to actually fight in that last battle somehow um because i'm sure they would have done it they, like get you and mcgregor there get hayden christensen there get sam jackson there i like, get all of them there and like i'm telling you this movie would have been bumped up by at least like two points for that um uh-huh I, agree. But I think there's some really cool themes in the plot you know like I, I love the redemption arc that kylo goes through of course i love leia reaching him through that way of kind of finally getting him to turn into you know ben solo not kylo ren that stuff's really cool i like the message luke gives her about you know like still trying and things like that that he believes in her so like there's some cool things i agree i don't like ray being a palpatine much it's cool to see her use lightning and stuff and see kind of that temptation like you were saying randy but um i i don't like her being a palpatine either and I, I personally would have liked if just Snoke had been the main villain the entire three movies and lead to a big epic conclusion with Snoke. Um, I know that you can kind of try to see why Palpatine's back, but it's still kind of just in this gray area of like no one really truly knows. I don't think Star Wars even knows too well why he's back. It seems like they were trying to always find a way to explain that through like the books and stuff. There's always a little bit of different interpretations of how that happened. So to me, it just felt like they were trying to kind of go fan servicey and bring back, you know, original Palpatine to come back for the final movie, which like I respect that, but I don't think it worked well for the plot. Um, so yeah, I can't give the plot too much. Like there's some good stuff there, but even when I'm like watching it, with my, like I watched it with my friends a bit ago and like people ask me questions about the plot like why is that happening like why um why won't Finn tell Ray his question that he has for her what he's trying to tell her and I'm like yeah, I don't they don't know. even follow up with that <laughs> like there's so many things that I'm like I don't know I'm like I don't I can't really explain to you why I can't defend the movie too well like I want to defend it but I can't defend it too well because I don't know either um so unfortunately the plot's got to be a little down for me there but like at least also, everything else holds it up pretty well but what were you saying? Also, like four fake out death scenes. That's yeah. That's, that's really bad, honestly. I, for, I forgot to Chewbacca. mention that too. Yeah. Chewbacca, C three PO, kinda. <laughs> uh, Kylo Ren, Ray. <laughs> yeah. That's four. I, I forgot I mean, to mention that. Mission... C three PO's thing. I mean, you gotta admit he that he comes back. He comes it, back. No, it was which. Which you gotta admit, it, it makes was, sense for R2 to have a backup, even though they're constantly at odds. I mean, that one, like, I... It yeah. feels cheap. It doesn't <sighs> feel earned. It feels cheap. I... Anyways. Yeah, well, I forgot to mention that, too. I was gonna mention that. I don't like how it's like, oh, Chewbacca's dead. And then it's like, he's somehow alive. I don't know how. Because it looked like a ship yeah, exploded, but I guess... Yeah, but that didn't, they didn't show that well. Like, I, I couldn't get No, that I was like, that. where did the other transporter go? It was just like... Yeah. <laughs> exactly. And then, um, yeah, the C-3PO one too, like, even in the trailers, they made it out to be, like, this big sacrifice. Like, he's like, I'm getting one last look at my friends. So you could tell, like, oh, this is going to be over. But um, for C-3PO, like, he's going to get this big ending or something. And then he just... He's back, because R2-D2 is just like, what up? I can repair you. Uh -huh. So, <laughs> well, I'm like, I wish that... Well, you have to admit, R2-D2 saves everyone in almost every movie. I mean, so find yeah. a way to save at least his closest friends. So uh, yeah, but I, I would have been down. He's kind of Deus Ex Machina, so just to see him just get his final sacrifice there or something that would have been cool. Or at least just don't tease that in the trailers, you know? Like it was kind of the trailers' fault. Yeah, that right. Feel that way because they hype that up in the trailers for for the movie. Yeah. Um, um, how much time do we got? We got about three minutes, so we're gonna wrap oh, this shoot. up. I think. Okay. So, yeah, we should. Everyone get the final scores out of 10. We got an average here. What's your final score, Randy? Uh, I believe mine was uh, 8.6 out of 10. All right. What about you, Aiden? 6.6 uh, 6 out of 10. 
Nice. Right I actually got a 6.6 .6 out of 10 as well, so that's crazy. Oh, wow. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> and then out of five stars, what would you give it, Randy? Uh, 4.5 out of stars. Nice. What about you? Uh, you go first, Andrew. I got, I'm giving it a 3 out of 5. Yeah, I'm I'm debating between... Uh, yeah, I'll give it 3. <laughs> yeah, it's like that's exactly where I feel about it. Um... And then we'll find we'll finish off with the Rotten Tomato score. It's a fifty-one percent. Do you guys agree with that? No. <laughs> I, 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 I think it should be higher. I think it should at least get a sixty, maybe even a seventy. Okay. I think it should get a uh, fifty, 50 like in the later, 50, maybe sixty. What about you? I put it like in the 60s range, maybe like exactly I a 70. So I wouldn't go much higher than a 70. Um, no, maybe like even. a 68 or something like that, but I couldn't go past 70 for this one. Um, it should be higher than like Attack of the Clones. I think Attack of the Clones is higher than this one, which baffles me. Because this I is think a lot better than Attack of the Clones. I think compared to other that should be higher. Yeah, like it's so much better than like Attack of the Clones or Phantom Menace. Like I think both those should be like 30%, 20% movies. And this one should be like 60 or 70%. But agreed. Can't pick can't pick and choose that. So anyway, that'll be the wrap up of our review there. Uh well thank you, Randy, for coming on. And make sure yeah. you guys like and subscribe. Thanks. We've done all the movies now. We got solo, rogue one, prequels, originals, check them all out. We've got a playlist full of them. If you're an MCU fan, check out our Falcon and Winter Soldier rankings. We just ranked the entire show. Uh make sure you check us out on Instagram, the Elite Review Podcast. Comment below what you think of Rise of Skywalker, and we will see you guys soon. See ya. Peace out. See ya.